Hey guys, From Woods Farmer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to change your South Bend, or realistically any kind of one of these older lays, from a lantern style tool post holder, which is this right here, to a BXA and a Lorius type of quick change tool post holder. This was a marketplace fine, and I offered the guy $100. He took it. This was a really good deal. It has all the different holders. It didn't come with any uh, carbide indexable holders like this to put the inserts to put in the holders, but uh, it ha has a wide ver uh, variety of range of uh, different style holders here. Uh, as you can see, I mean, there's even a boring bar holder, all these for the indexable uh, cutters. And this was just a prop I wanted to show you for an indexable cutter. This is the style. This is a real good one, it's a Wesson. This is a style that'll go into these, and then these are all already pre-rigged, you know, and then you drop them down in, and I'll show you once we get it on the lathe if you're not uh, used to that, but if you're wondering uh, how hard it is, uh, this is one, see, I ground down for my lantern style tool post, and it went really well. These hold the carbide tipped uh, cutting edges. So yeah, uh, the old lantern style tool post holders are great. Um, you know, they're, in my opinion, there's there's a lot of quick change you can do if you have enough of these. You, but all these whole different holders, if you had enough of these, you'd pretty much be okay. It's not as fast, um, but for back in the day, it was really practical. This is my South Bend 14 and a half inch lathe. And uh, I'm going to show you the number real quick. If you have this lathe, this is like a plug and play, as you will. Um, that number, um, BXA. It's like the Alorius. They say this will fit the 12 to 14 inch uh, swing lathe. Uh, so it's real easy. Um, when you want to change these, you just, you know, you change this out. I'll show you how easy this is. You're, you're not going to believe me. Take that out. And if you get this number with that style, it's pretty simple. I don't know if I could do this with one hand, but we'll try it. Loosen that up right here. Uh, hang on. Nope. Couldn't do it with one hand. So, there we go. Kiss, tighten this nut up. I'm gonna come back around and show you guys. Just the way you want it. You get a crescent wrench here. I'll lay the size off the top of my head for this. Tighten that up as you will. Make sure that's still working. Nice. That's it, it's on there nice and solid. I don't know which way is which yet. Of course, this would have your cutter already in your holder, so you could just pop it on real fast. Put this on, and that's it. And that's not even tight. So if you, you know, wherever you wanted it, you can move it, and it would stay there too, essentially. And that's it, guys, BXA. Here's your part number. It's kind of like an Alorius. They may use the same numbers, but it's a, the 222, the 252, 22. Uh, another buddy of mine has, uh, he has a few of these lays, and he has the 222, and then I can't remember the other number, and it works, but it's a bit small. This is what you want for the 14 and a half. Uh, I'd assume you could probably make this work on a nine, but it would be a little big. I think the last numbers are like, I don't want to say, uh, if, if I can get a hold of them, I'll put the numbers for the nine in the comments that I would suggest, but for the 250, uh, you know, Lorius, uh, that's what they suggest for the 14 and a half. Um, again, a hundred bucks, this is a $350 setup, but even for 350 bucks, you can't beat it. And I'm not going to be like anyone else. And this to me, I'm still using this. I got, I got a ton of holders, a ton of carbide tip cutters, all that stuff, lathe tolling. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep them both. It's, you know, just to add to, for uh, usability, I guess you would say. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like milling videos, hit the subscribe button. I'll share on the shop real quick. Uh, here's a project we're working on right now. This is Cincinnati number two horizontal mill. It's a pretty big mill. Uh, we got the bridge port just about buttoned up. If you guys uh, scroll through my videos, you'll see this uh, th didn't even have that. That turret was a different turret. It had a, a tracing mill turret. We took the head off. We put a J5 turret on. It's pretty cool, interesting uh, video. We're gonna do this uh, Sibley drill press. 
Uh, I wanted to get this bridge port all buttoned up. It's like I said, it's pretty much done. I put some new scales on it. Uh, there's also some scales that go on here, but I, I don't know if we can mount these. Most of them hold rivets, but this is, this is a 3M back. So maybe we could 3M this uh, onto our turret assembly. <clears throat> but yeah, if you guys like this kind of thing, uh, hit the subscribe button, like, share my videos, and hey, throw a comment. Constructive criticism is always good. So if you have anything uh, to add, maybe some tips on the lathe or, you know, the way I'm using my, my, my tools or whatever, uh, comment because everybody that watches the videos, they pretty much see those comments. And uh, this channel has helped out a lot of people before. Thanks for watching, guys.